Being in the garage doesn't make you a car, and being in the church doesn't make you a Christian. I want to talk to you today about what it means to walk with Jesus. Well, hello, I'm Jerry Dearman. Welcome to the Solid Lives Weekly Message, and we're on this new series called Are You Ready? And today I want to talk to you about this. Are you walking with Jesus? A lot of people say, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, but I want to ask you, are you walking with Jesus? So grab a Bible, let's pray, let's open up our hearts to receive, because I believe God has a word for you today. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity that most people in the world do not have to hear from the scriptures, to hear the God-breathed word of God. And Lord, I pray that you would help me by the Holy Spirit to speak this message in such a way that each person who's watching or listening would hear exactly what you're saying to them. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so here we are. Are you ready? And today, are you walking with Jesus? I want to begin, if you'll open your Bible to John chapter 15. This is a very beloved passage of Scripture, a very famous portion of Scripture. But Jesus has something to say to you and me today from John chapter 15. So here's what it says in the first three verses. Jesus speaking, he said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Now, most translations do that same thing. They use a word like clean. But in the Greek, it's the same root word as the word pruned in verse 2. So here's what Jesus is saying. He said, listen, I'm the true vine. Now, why does he say true vine in verse 1? Well, because there are other options. What do, what do we mean by that? Jesus is saying, you don't have to come to me to be the source of your life. You can depend on money. You can depend on relationships. I think of the passage in Jeremiah 17 where God says, cursed is the person that trusts in people. You're cursed if you trust people instead of trusting God. And then it turns right around and says, but blessed is the person who trusts in God. And Jesus is saying, listen, I'm the true vine. If you want the nutrients that you need, if you want the truth, if you want direction, if you want salvation, if you want forgiveness of sins, if you want strength, if you want eternal life, well, you're going to have to get that from Jesus. So he says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser or the gardener, so to speak. And then he goes on to say, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the father takes it away. In other words, God doesn't want anybody that's a part of his family that is not living with Jesus, that is not following Jesus and bearing fruit. So he said, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. And then he says this, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And then he turns right around and says, you're already clean. And that could be translated, you are already pruned because of the word that I have spoken to you, because of the word which I have spoken to you. So what does that mean? Well, these disciples, these 12 disciples, had walked with Jesus about two and a half years. This is, John 15 is the night before Jesus died on the cross. He'd walk with them he had discipled them for two and a half years, and he just spoke and spoke and spoke, taught them the word of God. And as he was teaching them, he was bringing correction. He was bringing instruction. He was bringing direction. He was bringing insight to them. And the more he talked to them and the more they listened to these words, those words were pruning things out of their lives. Those words were uh, pruning behaviors, attitudes, habits, paradigms, worldviews, pruning those things away and just leaving those things were, that were of God, the right perspective, God's perspective, God's worldview, the habits of living for the Lord, the behaviors, see, and the, the heart attitudes, the motives of the heart. See, Jesus, through his word, works with us and deals with us in every part of our lives to shape us up, to prepare us to be a very fruitful 
uh, person that fulfills the calling of God, ministers to people, well, like Jesus. When you become a disciple of Jesus, you become like him. And so these men, and of course we know one of them, decided to walk away. And he went after money. See, so we still have a choice. Even if we're believers, even if we've heard the word, we still have a choice. And Judas chose wrong. But the rest of them, well, they went on to bear much fruit. And this is what Jesus said, you're already pruned in verse 3 because of the word which I have spoken to you. Now, the Lord is asking us in this series if we're ready for the future. Are you ready for what's coming? Are you ready for the end of the age? Are you ready to fulfill your calling? See, and so now he's saying, are you walking with Jesus? Are you walking with Jesus? And I, I want to share with you that I learned to walk with Jesus as a young man. I learned to allow Jesus to prune me with his word. Let me tell you how I did that. First of all, I became very desperate. I needed deliverance from the bondage of lust. I was a teenager. I was uh, 17 and just then I turned 18 and I was seeking God, calling out to him and I needed him. Well, I found out that through the Bible, through the word of God, Jesus would come and he would speak to me and he would teach me. He would prune things out of my life. He would prune wrong thinking. For example, I used to think because I sinned that I was no longer worthy to come to God and ask for anything, to pray for anything, and it, I couldn't expect to receive it because I was unworthy. See, and so Jesus took his word and he taught me that he purchased my worthiness on the cross, that Jesus was already righteous and he exchanged his righteousness, his worthiness before God for my sin. I gave him my sin and he gave me his worthiness. The Bible calls it righteousness. See, and so it was a free gift to me. And so I, I needed to stop coming and begging God, oh Lord, I'm not worthy to come to you. Oh, I'm just a worm. Oh Lord, I'm just a sinner. I'm so unrighteous. I'm so unworthy. Jesus pruned that kind of talk out of me. Now, I still needed to come and confess my sin. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I did need to come and say that the righteousness that he gave me, the worthiness that he gave me was not good enough, that my sin overpowered it, that my sin was bigger than his righteousness. See, and so Jesus had to teach me how to talk the truth of the Bible. I was talking out of emotion. I was trying to be humble and really I was just being ignorant. I was just being inaccurate. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross and paid for my sins, but everything coming out of my mouth was, I'm still unforgiven. I'm still a sinner. See, and so I stopped saying things like, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, I was a sinner and I've been saved by grace. So therefore I'm not a sinner anymore. Just because I fall and sin, that doesn't make me a sinner. Isn't that right? Just because I fixed the plumbing in my house, that doesn't make me a plumber. If I can repair the electricity, that doesn't make me an electrician. And just because you sin, that doesn't make you a sinner again. No, if you've been born again, if you've been saved, if you've been washed by the blood of Jesus, then God does not see you as a sinner anymore. He sees you as the righteousness of God in Christ. And see, Jesus was taking his word and he was pruning wrong thinking out of my mind. He was pruning wrong speaking out of my mouth. He was pruning wrong behavior uh, away from my body. See, Jesus was doing that, but he kept doing it with his word. And so you know what I was doing? I was, I'd get up in the morning and I'd spend time in his word. Of course, I'd eat some breakfast or have some coffee or something, but I'd spend time in the word and then on the way to work. I would be listening to teaching of the Word of God, good teaching, teaching that convinced me that these scriptures are true, not just talking about them, but you believe it less after the teaching than you did before the teaching. There's a lot of teaching out there like that where they say, well, it says that, but you know, the way that it really works is, oh, don't listen to that. <laughs> no, it works the way God said it works. 
It's exactly true. Even if it sounds too good to be true, it is true because it's the Word of God. And I began to listen to people that were teaching and preaching the Word of God, convincing me that these precious promises that seemed too good to be true really were true. And I just needed to believe them. See, and so I'd listen on the way to work. And then at work, well, depending on which job I was doing, when I worked at the grocery store during the day, well, I couldn't listen to the word on my headphones because I had to deal with customers and such. But, uh, but on my break, you know what I would do? If I took a break or if I took a lunch, I would take my Bible. I would go have lunch with Jesus. I would open up my Bible while I'm eating lunch and read. And man, often the tears would flow down my face because through the scriptures, Jesus was talking to me. He was fellowshipping with me. See, I learned to abide in the true vine with the Bible and with a humble heart, seeking God, wanting to hear from him. You know, what Jesus said, whoever hungers and thirsts for righteousness will be filled. If you're hungering and thirsting for the Lord to speak to you and you open up his word, you'll hear him speak. He will speak. See, and so I learned to fellowship. I started memorizing scriptures. I remember when I started working night crew and I was stocking shelves. Well, there are no customers around now, so I could put my headphones on. I could listen to the word of God for hours and hours and hours. I was consuming the word of God. I was being saturated in the word of God. And you know what happened? There was an accelerated process of being pruned. Oh, I was corrected, but I loved it. You know what I love about correction? Now I get to be right. Whatever I was wrong in, when the word of God comes in and tells me that's not it, it's that. It's that. Well, all right, now, now I'm more accurate in that area. See, learn to love the correction of the word of God so that you can begin to think truth, begin to believe truth, begin to talk truth, begin to live truth. See, I loved it. This is all happen, happening and does happen by fellowshipping with Jesus in his word, in his word, just consuming the word of God. When I would get home and I would go to bed, I would have the word of God going as I was going to sleep. I was single, didn't have anybody else to bother. I just have the word of God going. Just being washed. You know, the Bible talks about the washing of the water of the word. I was just being washed by the word of God. And oh, I learned so fast. I grew so quickly. I matured much faster than people my age because I was, in, I was a disciple of Jesus. Some people say, oh, I would have loved to have walked with Jesus. Well, walk with him now. Walk with him now. Oh, yeah, here he is. He, he said in John 14, he said, if anyone keeps my word, I'll manifest myself to them and the father will manifest himself to them. In fact, he said, we'll come and make our home with him. Well, how if you keep the word? See, these words are not just normal words like any other book. These are God breathed. The English Standard Version says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scriptures breathed out by God. Didn't say was, said is. He's still breathing these things. When you open the Bible, when you listen to somebody read it, even now, God's still breathing these words. He's still breathing these words. God wants us to have fellowship with Jesus. Jesus wants us to have fellowship with him. In fact, let me read to you Revelation 3.20 from the Living Bible. This is where Jesus is speaking to the churches, to the believers, and he says this, Look, I have been standing at the door, and I am constantly knocking. If anyone hears me calling him and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him, and he with me. Notice, I'm standing at the door knocking, and if anyone hears me calling him, if anyone hears me calling him, well, what is he talking about? He's talking about calling to you in your heart. Do you hear him down in your heart? Well, then open up to him and say, Lord, come, come. I want you to come in fellowship with me. I want you to come and live with me, be with me. You know, sometimes if you're part of a family and there's a lot of talk and, you know, uh, sort of family dynamics that are going on that are distracting, sometimes you just have to go into a bedroom and shut the door and say, Lord, I love you. I want you to speak to me. I want to walk with you. Uh, so 
I've heard some mothers say, oh, I just go to the bathroom and I shut the door. It's my only time to be able to talk with God and to fellowship with the Lord because of the kids and their constant needs and such. Well, whatever you need to do, Jesus is knocking and he's saying, I want to fellowship with you. I want to bless you. I want to teach you. I want to forgive you. I want to direct you. I want to show you my plan for your life. See, this is an invitation from the Lord Jesus to walk with him. But it's also a key to being ready for things in the future. Walking with Jesus today prepares you for what's coming tomorrow. Walking with Jesus today prepares you for all eternity. Now, we looked at 1 John in the last lesson, but I want to look at it again. 1 John chapter 1 and beginning at verse 6. In fact, I want to begin now in verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I'll never forget when the Lord taught this to me and said, listen, when you sin, son, when you sin, and boy, did I have problems with sin. As a teenage young man with hormones high and uh, the bondage of lust, these evil spirits there, oh, all of it came together and just seemed to drag me into sin. But I wanted to be delivered. Well, here's one of the things that God taught me. If you want to stay in fellowship with Jesus, confess sin quickly. Confess sin quickly. You may be in the middle of a sin. Confess it while you're in the middle of the sin. When it comes to mind, oh, this is sin, I need to confess it. Well, start confessing it. Somebody said, while I'm still sinning, start confessing it right then. Do it immediately. Why? Because the sooner you get out of your mouth what it is and you call it a sin, the sooner the power of sin loses its grip on you because now you're calling it out for what it is. And another thing the Lord taught me is when you confess it as sin, then it's covered in the crucifixion clause. In other words, Jesus died for all the sin. Until you admit that it's sin, then it doesn't get covered, even though he paid for it. But once you say this is sin, then God, the judge, he says, oh, well, if it's sin, then that's covered. Jesus has already paid for that. He's washed, washed you from that. And here's the thing. Once you confess it and the Lord forgives you from that, now you're back to walking in righteousness. So Jesus taught me, do it right away. Don't let it linger for an hour. Certainly don't let it linger for a day or a week. No, confess right now, right now. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. See, it'd be like, thank God my wife and I, we, you know, yes, we sometimes don't see eye to eye. And sometimes we are speaking from two sides of an issue. But for the most part, we've learned to walk in love with each other. And we don't speak harshly to each other. We don't put each other down. And, and so if I ever did say something that was strong and hurtful, oh, I don't want to wait five minutes or an hour to repent. I want to say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Honey, I apologize. I didn't mean to say that like that. I want to do it quickly. Because the longer I let that go, the more it can cause destruction in our fellowship and relationship. I want to do it right away. And I found that even with my wife, if I do it quickly, oh, it can sort of nip it in the bud. But if I let it go, oh, it can hurt her. It can fester. It can, you know, her mind, she has to think about it. But if I repent humbly right away, all that goes away. Well, with Jesus, it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt him for us to delay. It hurts us. It hurts us. I also found that when I don't confess quickly, then I'm vulnerable to keep sinning that sin. I'm vulnerable for it to be perpetuated. But if I confess it, then I'm back on track. See, and so this is so important. And Jesus is teaching us here through the word of God today how to fellowship with him. And when fellowship is broken, how to see that fellowship restored. Confessing sin 
restores fellowship. Confessing sin restores fellowship because Jesus will always forgive you when you confess it. Why? Because He's already paid for it. That's why it says He's faithful and just to forgive us when we confess. It didn't say He's merciful and gracious. It said He's faithful and just. Why? Because if you confess it as sin, since He's already paid for the sin, He would be unfaithful and unjust not to forgive you because He's paid for it. See, but, but you have to confess it. And then He forgives us and washes us. Now let's close with Luke chapter 6. We're talking about fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus Christ and being ready for what's coming in the future. And Luke 6, 47 says this. Jesus said, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them. Notice, here's my words. Here's the pruning that happens. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Let me read that last line again. It reads a little different than the version that I'm used to, but I like this. It says, in fact, the whole verse 48, He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose... The stream broke against that house. And let me tell you, that's what's happening in our world. Streams, floods, chaos, all kind of things are coming against people. And it says the stream broke against that house, but it could not shake it because it had been well built. How was it well built? It was well built because this person came to Jesus and heard his words and obeyed those words. And this is how you stay in fellowship. You just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. You come to the Word of God. You listen to teachings like you're doing right now. You just keep coming and listening, listening, coming and listening, coming and listening. And then you put into practice what you're learning, what you're hearing. Jesus said, if you'll do that, you're going to have a solid life. If you do that, when the storms of life come, they will not be able to shake you. Why? You've been pruned. You have been disciplined. You have been strengthened. You have been corrected. Your thinking has been calibrated to the truth. And so you just think correctly. You just talk correctly. You act correctly. You behave correctly. You have the right worldview. And he said, that way, when things come against you, you're solid. Not, not because you're confident. That'll happen too but because you're right. You're in right standing with God. God's protection is around you. You're basing your life on truth, etc., etc. And so this is so powerful. Now, many years ago, I felt led of the Lord to develop a system that would help people to walk in this kind of fellowship with Jesus and be pruned, be prepared, be discipled by the Lord Jesus Christ. And based on this passage, I called it Operation Solid Lives. Operation Solid Lives. It's a system where the things that the Bible tells us to do to become solid, well, that's what you do in Operation Solid Lives. And so we did it at our church. And I mean, now we've had thousands and thousands of people engage with this. And you ought to hear the testimonies of people that, I mean, people that used to be alcoholics drug addicts, marriages that were on the rocks, people that were suicidal, people that were in disillusionment, people that had no direction in life, and all the testimonies that would come. And these people would have joy in their hearts because they know it wasn't just principles. Oh, no. Yes, it does have. The Word of God does have principles. Thank God. No, but it's a person. It's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to you through the Word of God, and l walking with you, leading you, discipling you. This is what's so powerful. So I, I developed this system, and anybody that comes and walks through this, well, it's just full of God's Word. It's not magic. The system is only designed to bring you to Jesus and to help you hear the Word of God from the Lord and obey it. And I'm telling you, that's where... That's where the power happens.
That's the game changer. And so Operation Solid Lives, we did it at our church, and then other churches began to do it. And we've had hundreds of churches do this. But now it's available online for anybody, anytime, 24 hours a day. You can go to OSL dot, you can go OS, OSLonline.com. OSLonline.com. And you can either walk through this. There are various levels of it. You can walk through these levels as an individual, or you can walk through it as a group. I encourage you, do it as a group. Get some other people with you to do it. You're not the only one who needs to be uh, discipled by the Lord Jesus. So ask a friend or several friends, uh, family members to do it with you and then get online and begin to walk through it. It's, it's not that complicated. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh yeah, there's a checklist for you each week. The first level, four weeks and you'll be done, but you'll be changed, but you'll be changed. And I'm inviting you to begin a walk of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with Him. Don't only believe in Him. Don't only be saved, but walk with Jesus. Be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's when your life really takes on meaning. That's when your life really begins to get exciting because you're walking out the plan of God for your life. Well, stay tuned for some messages here at the end. In fact, let's pray before we go. And then stay tuned at the end because we just have a few things we want to share with you. Father... I pray for each and every person. You're speaking to people. You know everything that's happening in their lives and you love them and your hands are extended saying, come, come fellowship with me. Come walk with me. Let me minister to you through the word of God. Let me teach you, train you, encourage you and instruct you so that you can be the man of God or the woman of God that you're called to be. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen each person by the Holy Spirit, not only to hear and say amen, but Lord, now to take steps, to take steps, to begin to fellowship with the Lord Jesus or to begin to fellowship with him at a whole new level. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, stay tuned for some more messages. I pray you are walking with Jesus this week and taking time to invest into that relationship. Remember, the Solid Lives app has great resources to help you on your journey, including daily Bible reading plan, daily YouTube videos, access to all the YouTube teachings in Jerry's library. You can download the Solid Lives app for both iPhone and Android to get all of these great resources. By the way, if you are on the go and want another great way to get the word in your ears, search for Jerry Dearman on your favorite podcast service to find his series. This series, the weekly messages, as well as the New Testament daily are both on there. Hey, and speaking of great resources, don't forget that this month we've got that free nine part teaching signs of his coming from the solidlives.com store. You can visit the store through solidlives.com or click store on the Solid Lives app. Solid Lives is committed to bringing messages like this, online discipleship, and so much more to you all free of charge. We want to say a special thanks to all of you who help make this possible every month with your financial gifts. If you haven't yet, giving is easy. You can set up a recurring tax deductible gift of any amount when you click give at solidlives.com or through the app. We believe according to God's word that when you sow into kingdom ministry, he provides abundantly back to you. Hey, God is a giver and he made all of us in that same image. Thank you so much for joining us this week and we'll see you next week. And I want to say to all of you that if you feel like the Lord wants you to minister, maybe right there in your neighborhood, maybe right there in your home, to the community, to your neighbors around you, then I want to invite you to partner with us to plant a house church. I just moved with my wife to a brand new neighborhood, and I'm telling you, God is stirring my heart, and I'm praying, Lord, help me to make many disciples in this neighborhood, and Lord, help me to plant many churches in this neighborhood. Now, of course, we have campuses that are part of the church that I pastor, but oh, I know in my heart that with the season we're in and with the season that's coming, God wants to plant house churches everywhere. If you feel called, if you would pray and you feel a tug on your heart that God wants you to at least look into it and be trained, I'd love for you to go and fill out an interest form either at solidlives.com, clicking on house churches, or 
the Solid Lives app. Fill out an interest form and allow us to partner with you, allow us to train you, allow us to show you the many tools and resources that we have to help house church leaders. And if you want to cover and you can be part of our ministry, Solid Lives, and we'll connect on a regular basis. We'll continue to train you, pray for you, and partner with you to see God do a mighty work right there in your neighborhood. I'd love to have your partner with us here at Solid Lives. Go to solidlives.com or the Solid Lives app.